Contact tracing is a process through which people who have been infected are tracked and followed as they come into contact with other people as well. My name is Hamid Khan. I'm an organizer with a group out of Los Angeles called the Stop LAPD Spine Coalition, uh, which basically monitors and organizes against the, the National Security Police State. So contact tracing sounds innocent enough, sounds important for public health. What are your concerns? Quite frankly, public health has been one of the most primary tools for social control. So public health has always been central to the policing of our bodies, central to the, that who who has access, who does not, um, who, who can be admitted uh, in society or not. So I think contact tracing, in this context, we need to look at it that how that has been used very effectively to demonize communities as well, how that contact tracing has historically been weaponized um, and then used as a process uh, to, to pathologize, to demonize. I mean, right now, what we are looking, the tragedy, what we are looking unfold is the in immense disproportionate impact of COVID on the black community. At the pure level of public health, it sounds reasonable. I'm infected. Who else have I infected? Is your problem with the pursuit of the information or how it will be done or the context in which it's happening? We need to be safe. We need to be stay healthy. But I would argue and I would also present what has been the history around the surveillance of when, when a crisis has, has blown up. So, for example, after 9-11, after under, under the guise of public safety, under the guise of national security, what happened? We saw a massive expansion of the national security police state. So, so I think we also need to look at it that it's not just when we talk about the police state, I'm looking at it through the lens of like, you know, who has their bottom line interest in this, in this expansion of the police state. So while constantly we have been told over, over the years, and I gave you 9-11 as an example, uh, that this is for national security, this is for public safety. But when you cut through a lot of this stuff and when you, when you, when you look at the facts, a whole surveillance industrial complex has been created. Mega profits have been made for th third party data collection. And there's a lot of money to be made as a result of that too. It's interesting that the mainstream discussion seems to be about two private corporations, Google and Apple, collaborating to insert some kind of application into your iPhone and your Android device that would enable all of the people that you've passed, all of the other iPhones or phones that you've passed at least, to be recorded some way. The contrasting approach seems to be coming from people like Paul Farmer and uh, partners in health in the Boston area with long experience working with Ebola um, and other diseases, communicable diseases in Haiti, for example, where they say that the best contact tracing is human to human. Mm -hmm. has to do with people knowing each other, connecting with each other and passing information. Some of it could be helpful. What do you think it will take for us as a society perhaps to go one direction rather than the other. Growing up in Pakistan and growing up around tuberculosis eradication themes and all of that, we didn't have any cell phones or technologies. This was a mass community education program. Eradication of all of these things in different parts of the world have been happening for the longest time and diseases and infectious diseases have been spreading for the longest time as well. It's only the last 10 or 15 years that we are granting technology so much power. So I would absolutely agree that we need to have a mass community education education program because see the thing is that culturally what we have here is that we are again policing our way out of these problems that rather than what prevention would look like and what that intervention would look like over time which really brings us back to like you know thinking forward that where would these investments be going should the investments be going with these two trillion dollar and more stimulus packages coming in, going to the corporations or going to these companies uh, um, into, into creating a much bigger infrastructure of the police state and surveillance, or it should be going into mass community education. Should the investments be going into access to healthcare? How many more bailouts would we need? How many more state interventions would we need? So I think this is a major indictment again and again of capitalism that we continue to see. But of course, like, you know, I mean, this is something that we have to continue to fight back. Thank you.